I'm Tom Adler and I'm with artist Dan Annarino in his studio in downtown Lafayette. Uh, one of his paintings, Crossroads Mysteries, is in the permanent collection of the Art Museum of Greater Lafayette. And Dan's invited us into the studio here to talk a little bit about that painting. Uh, thanks for having us. Welcome. Glad uh, you're here. Perhaps to contextualize uh, that painting, you might be able to say a few words that would help characterize yourself as an artist, maybe something about your stylistic techniques, your choice of subject matter? Okay, well, uh, I was born and raised here in, in uh, Lafayette, and so I've been in the Midwest and the countryside around the area here all my life, and uh, I, I really enjoy being out in the country in the back roads of Indiana. And uh, so it's just become sort of a part of me, and uh, obviously that's affected my work. I do primarily landscapes. and. Uh, Another thing that I do graphic design also is sort of my day job and I think that's always influenced my work too, uh, kind of the structure and uh, grid systems and mm -hmm. things like that and which also translates from the landscapes, the Indiana landscape, the fields and the roads and the horizons and tree lines and telephone poles that, you know, there is a certain structure. Yeah, there's a grid, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so I kind of play up on that and it's got kind of a contemporary feel to it and so I kind of push that way and I tend to try to balance between sort of a traditional realism on one hand to a more contemporary and mm -hmm. some abstract things going yeah. on and, mm -hmm. and whatnot, so. Yeah, certainly uh, your paintings, I mean, the one behind us and the one in our collection, I mean, they're recognizably realistic, but there is also that sort of abstract element that comes in uh, to the paintings. Yeah, uh, like I say, uh, I don't particularly want to be just a traditionalist painting or like a plein air painter or whatnot, yet I don't want to be completely abstract. I have gone both directions. I sort of try to somewhat dance between the two mm -hmm. so that it's recognizable to a point but yet there's some mystery and some different things mm -hmm. that get people thinking and it creates different uh, fields and so forth. Now when I look at the Crossroads Mysteries that's in our collection, I mean your paintings seem to, to uh, segment into certain quadrants almost. Right. Uh -huh. it, well and that, that has something to do with like, like a crossover like in here that to me, it's like sets up different times, okay. uh, different time of day, different seasons, mm -hmm. the fact that there's always change and flux, uh, you know, and within a landscape, there's a seasonal thing going mm -hmm. on. And so while it's, it's, I've always been interested how out in the, you're out in that, that area and so forth, that it's, it's always kind of the same, but yet it's always continually mm -hmm. changing, you know, and it, one point, you know, it'll be high corn in there right. and it's greens and yellows. The next thing it's browns and or mm -hmm. grays and so forth. So uh, I kind of play up on a lot of that kind of uh, yeah. issues. Yeah, I mean, in the painting we have, it's not only uh, uh, that you carry on the, the scene of us, but one side is really night uh, and then one side is day. Right. And then the bottom half of the painting is very, very abstract. Right. As if you're almost in a different world. Well, and I try to bring in a little bit of mystery to it, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's kind of interesting. People relate differently to different things in it, and you know they see different things, or mm -hmm. it gives them a different kind of emotion rather than maybe something that's real obvious or you know kind of hits you in the face. And uh, I think another element I'm big on is uh, the roads out there. I spend a lot. I've spent all my life a lot, a lot of time driving around out in the country. Uh, I just love driving the back roads of mm -hmm. midwestern landscapes and so forth and uh and then you know the road is something that's taking you somewhere you you've been here you're go possibly going there what's in the future kind of the same thing with the skies the shifts and so forth that you know it's a kind of a time thing there's the mm -hmm. past there's the future there's night there's day and then the roads also, I, I do like like the one in the, the permanent collection, it's, it is an intersection and it's kind of always interesting. You come up on an intersection and a lot of times you have no bearings of, well, right. should I go right or left or straight, which is, you can kind of say the same thing in life, you know, which mm -hmm. direction do I take? Yeah. And, uh, and I have brought in other elements. I don't have figures in my work, but I do have outbuildings and mm -hmm. sheds and I've actually done some barns and, uh, uh, telephone poles and fence rows and those kind of things. So those are sort of those man-made objects, yet there aren't people in, the, mm -hmm. in them. And uh, the outbuildings I kind of like because there's sort of a sense of, of 
shelter, uh, and again, they're man-made. Uh, Sometimes, I really don't do houses per se, and I, like I say, I have done some barns, but I like just that simple outbuilding mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It sort of represents some kind of man-made shelter. So the, the title Mysteries, it also works into that sense of you're at this intersection or this crossroads and you don't know what you're going to find if you go in, in different right. directions or what will happen in the, in, in the future. Right. And, and, and like I say, literally driving out there, you, you stop and you go, well, if I go left, what am I going to see? What, what's, is there going to be a river valley over there or is there going to be a nice house or something? Uh, and you and you can kind of get lost, and I, I kind of like that element because a lot of times, you know, in life too, you don't quite know right. where that road's going to take yeah. you, and you you take it and see what happens. Could you talk a little bit about your bold color palette in, in your paintings? Sure. Uh, I think my biggest influence when I was in art school was uh, I really got into the Favas and uh, their bold use of color. Um, and uh, Matisse, he always used a pretty high color palette and uh, he was a big influence on my work. So I've kind of always run with that. And I don't know, I just tend to see a lot of times, I know there's different ways you can attack the color um, using grays more to accentuate color, but uh, I just tend to see a lot of color, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's an intense blue sky, the yellows of the corn or the gold of the soybeans mm -hmm. or deep blues and and so forth and so I just tend to use a higher color palette. The edges of your canvases are sort of interesting too. I mean up here for instance you'll put a little you know non-realistic <laughs> right object. Well and people are always asking about uh, the edges and then these these elements that I have the yes these sort of little objects or floating squares or, or whatnot. Yeah. Part of that is, uh, well, one, as I paint, I'm scraping a lot. I, I tend to use a palette knife primarily, um, and I build up in layers and layers using a lot of medium, so mm -hmm. these little transparent layers. And then I'll scrape away or leave certain areas alone. And these, these elements that you see, I, to me, they sort of, people are always ask me, what are those? And it's like, well, it's, a, it's kind of just a design element. Two, mm -hmm. I think it breaks it up from being such a sort of a static image mm -hmm. that it, it's, it starts to do some figure ground things. Mm -hmm. And I also feel like uh, they sort of, to me, represent what, when you're looking out at a landscape, there are things out there that you, they're there that you can't see. There might be bugs, there's, and getting kind of scientific, there's molecules and atoms floating around. And so it kind of represents that mysterious, maybe spiritual, maybe uh, scientific, you know, what's mm -hmm. going on out there. And plus I think it adds a little bit of lyricism to the to piece. The, the piece it yes. breaks oh, up yeah. kind of the rigid, uh -huh. rigid elements. Yeah, lyricism is, lyricism I think is a good word to describe what happens with those yeah. elements that you yeah. space there. And, and like I say, most of my paintings I start off, uh, they they start off as an abstract piece. I'll take acrylics and uh, I'll just use colors and do it maybe structured slightly or just completely abstract, turn on some good music and, and kind of play with it. Then uh, I'll flip the piece around or whatnot and start a landscape on it. And then, oh, okay. then I'll come into it with the oils. So a lot of times there may be an accident where there's a color behind that, that, I'll, that will pop out later. I'll, leave, I'll just leave it. Uh, it might set up an interesting edge and so forth. So it's kind of a, kind of an impermanence thing, sort of a Zen thing that it just keeps shifting and nothing mm -hmm. stays permanent, which is kind of like what the landscape does. Mm -hmm. it's, it's always changing and, and so forth. So uh, that's kind of how I work. And then I come into it with the landscape and uh, uh, like I say, keep building up the layers and scraping and adding and, uh, or as, a lot of artists say, you know, you start the painting, then you spend the whole rest of the time trying to fix the thing, make it work. So the the landscape is actually, in the process, the landscape is actually superimposed on the abstract yes. painting you started. Yes. So in this in this particular painting, what did you begin with? Uh, to be honest, I'd have to look at my notes. I can't, <laughs> okay. I can't even remember. Okay. Uh, uh, like I say, sometimes I stay very structured. I may even you know, do a quasi grid and I use, you know, four or five colors. Other times I'll use, uh, just kind of slap it on. I'll do three or four canvases so I have them ready to go. Mm -hmm. 
And then sometimes I draw on them with like acrylic black and just a fine brush to just block in some things. And, and then I start and then I switch over into the oils and which people always ask about that. The rule of thumb is you can always paint uh, oil over acrylic. You can't go the other way. It's sort of this fat over lean thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, interestingly enough, you've, you've taught graphic design, but you've never actually taught painting. No, no. Uh, but what would you uh, say to young aspiring artists uh, in the well, current cultural situation? <laughs> sure. Well, uh, and I've talked to a lot of young people and kids. Uh, friends of mine bring their kids up here because they're interested in art and so forth. And uh, I guess I'd just suggest that if you're into it, that one one thing I'm real sort of adamant is, is drawing that anybody in any visual field really should have a little understanding of drawing. You don't have to do pretty finalized, finished drawings, but to understand how to visually work mm -hmm. uh, with a pencil, and you can do it digitally too, but you know it's still good to, to learn how to draw. And if you really in, want to do this kind of thing, you, you really need to expose yourself to all different kinds of things. Right. Uh, one thing I found, obviously schooling is going to help, uh, taking lessons at a local Lafayette Art Museum <laughs> or, or wherever uh, is helpful, uh, keeping a sketchbook, and then also trying all different kinds of media mm -hmm. and so forth, because you might find something that works better for you. Um, and then uh, another thing that I think is real important to constantly either go to shows, whether it's at a museum mm -hmm. or galleries and you're in a city or whatnot, and like the Lafayette Museum has great shows that, uh, you know, and their openings and you can meet people there and meet artists and stuff. And I think that's a real good way to expose yourself to stuff. As well as going to the library. Uh, I probably, most of my life, I've constantly got library books out. And it may not even be just a book on painting, it may be a book on birds or uh, architectural things or, or whatnot, because it's amazing. You check something out and it may not interest you, but you might find something that mm. you can bring into your toolbox and it might affect your work. Okay. Well, thanks very much for talking with us. Thanks a lot for having okay. me.